here we are with another video, 6 o'clock in the morning, and it's early. The last couple of days I've been up early, been up late, putting it in, getting it in. But we're going to talk about the videos that I have coming out, part one and part two, concerning your ink, printhead, or whatnot. So if you need some information about your printheads, it's going to be in the video. And I'm going to have another video recap of what both of the videos consist of. I'm going to speak about what I mean in general, all summed up in one review, what you guys need to do. But as you can see right here, I have my cartridges sitting on the table. I already have them turned upside down. They're on the edge of the table, so if you can't really see, I have them sitting right here on the edge of the table, right? And what I do, let me go ahead and move this out the way. What I normally do is, I just flip them upside down. Now people agitate them, they rock them back and forth. This way, I've been doing for a long time, and it works. Novel check, perfect, no problem. So I already did this twice, so it's gonna be my third time. I just, I just find this way more sufficient and not putting any type of air bubbles inside of the ink cartridge. That's what you want to be real, real mindful of and something to watch out for. That's what your main problem has when you start having broken lines in your nozzle checks because you probably shook the ink too much or rocked it too much and that air pockets in it. And what happens is when you put the cartridge back inside of the printer, you power the printer on it's going to do a charge, it's going to pressurize, and then when you do a normal cleaning, you're going to push all the ink that's settled in the printer out of the printer, and all the ink in your print in your uh, ink cartridge that has air pockets in it inside of the lines into the printer, and then when you do a nozzle check, it's going to be inconsistent, it's going to have broken lines. So that's why I do it like this. So I don't worry about rocking too much i don't got to worry about how many times i need to rock it i flip it like four times and then i put them inside the printer and i'm good to go so i'm gonna do this one more time and after this they're going inside the printer the colors your cymk's do not shake your cymk's you do not have to shake your cymk's it depending on what ink supplier that you get your ink from all ink has different additives and different properties inside your ink. So maybe this formula that they use for this particular ink needs to be shaken. But I know for a fact that my ink that I have no need to be shaken on the CYM case, only on the whites. So we're going to go ahead and get this video started. And you guys can see the actual power cleaning. I mean, not the power cleaning. Yeah, but the power cleaning because I'm cutting the printer on. It's been off for the whole night. And uh, we're going to do a novel check. Some of these videos be long. People are like, oh, that's boring. I want to get to the meat and potatoes. But this is what you have to sit down and think about or sit down and go research. But if somebody here give you the information to help you with your printer, then it's good for the free 99. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you don't like and comment and subscribe, or you just don't just like the video, you just a fucking hater, straight up. Cause I know I got a lot of haters watching. 26, 30 video, uh, views, two likes, three likes. And I know the information is valuable. You just fucking haters. But it's all good though. Cause I'm still gonna keep going. Because a lot of you people need help. They don't even understand. See me, I'm good. Cause I know what to do. So I'm having problems. I'm going to swap my print head out. Or I'm going to swap my motherboard out. I'm not about to play with it. So we don't have the money for it. Then outsource the work. Like I always say, build your money up. Save. Use your credit if you got a credit. Pay back in increments if you have a credit card. Or buy you a motherboard for three, four hundred. Put 25 or 30 bucks on it until you pay it off. It's as simple as that. So we're going to get to it. There's no excuses in this. We're going to go ahead and put these inside. Let me go ahead and turn it this way a little bit for you guys can see. Let me scoot this fan over. So you guys can see me go ahead and put that in there. I got a lot of stuff on my uh 
on my plate. But let me go ahead and put this in there if I can show you what's going on. And this is just not, it's, it's just not simple, but it's just repetition. That's all it is. Every time you just been repetition. So this is a, um, I say an ongoing process, especially if you don't really know the day-to-day -day routines of how to make this or how to get the printer up and going. So be mindful with that. So it's a long video, like I said. I'm powering the printer on, and what we're doing now is going to just wait, let the printer <coughs> pressurize, and then we're going to take it from there. So you guys, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Like I said, this information is very educational for you guys. People watch, and don't comment, don't do nothing, just watch. And I know the information is valuable. Just haters, straight up, the world is full of haters. Man. When you get rid of the circle around you that you know people don't benefit you, you introduce yourself to a world full of haters you don't even know. <laughs> they watch the videos and only like, don't even comment, don't even know what's going on. And they ask you questions and stuff and it's in the video. So I look at that like, what is the world coming to? What is the world coming to? We don't like reading. We don't like going to research anything, or if we do, we half-ass do it, or we look at something and then say, hey, that's too hard and just quit. No, get your brain power up, you'll be all right. So what we about to do now is show you guys what's going on now. It just basically says recency. So we're gonna go ahead and do a little See, I got this chip right here. One of my chips went out. I have to swap that mug out. I ain't playing no games. So we're going to go ahead and do a little. I'm going to do a normal cleaning. Okay, I said I was going to do a power cleaning because it's in the morning time, right? But I don't do power cleanings that much. Let me rephrase that because I said something wrong. I don't do power cleanings that much. You post a powder printer on in the daytime or whatever time you get up and, you know, you shake your inks and do your normal cleanings or, do, I mean, do your power cleaning. I do a normal cleaning because why is this me personally? I've been doing a lot of novel checks and working with the printer for so long to where when I do a power cleaning or do a normal cleaning to me, it still comes out clean nozzle the same way if I would have power clean doing a normal clean. Now only how I would power clean if I have nozzles that's broken that's to where it's very, very noticeable. Like no, there's too many lines in this channel is gone. So I would do a I would do a normal cleaning first. If that don't work, then I would do a power cleaning. But when it gets to a point in time to where you know you always doing power cleaning and power cleaning and power cleaning, it like cuts your head life expectancy down because you don't want to keep doing that heavy cleaning and putting your print head through that heavy, heavy, um, you know, tense, tense of a cleaning cycle. So hope it makes sense. But after we do this right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this video short and I'm gonna just show you guys the nozzle check and how to properly shake your inks. And if you guys have any questions about it, like, comment, and I will get back to you. But with your print heads, ladies and gentlemen, my advice to everybody who's watching this video, if you get your printer, use, the, you don't know the history of the printer, clog nozzles, if you don't have the money, outsource your work until you can raise the money up to just buy a brand new print head. Do not start trying to flush or anything. Just buy another one. So people hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. You don't have the money to outsource the work until you can buy you another print head. When you remove the print head and take it off and start cleaning and flushing it, it's already going to be through from that point. It's been used too many times. Simple as that. So 
know the video is long, so I'm going to cut it short right now. But then I don't want to cut it short because I want to go through the whole cycle for you guys to see there's no camera tricks going on with this. I'm doing a normal cleaning in the morning time. I'm not doing a power cleaning because I don't want the printer to, to, to run that hard through the cycle if it's not necessary, especially if you don't have any clogged nozzles. So let that soak in on you guys. So anybody say, oh, I do a power clean, fine. But what I do, because I know this print head is in good condition, because it's like a brand new print head and it's inside here, so I don't have to do all, like I've been printing for a long time with this print head. This print head only probably got like a, I say, a month, if that. Yeah, I say about a month that I got used it. So, it's gonna stop in a minute. I'm gonna do this, show you the novel check. I can totally stop right now. I tell you it's gonna stop in a minute. I just have that feeling. Let's do a novel check and show you guys what's going on. I'm gonna cut this video short. For you guys that's interested in purchasing some good DTF products, go to the website, purchase the ink, powder, and film. I also have ICC profiles. I also have editing software. So if anybody need any of those, go to the DTF supplies and purchase that. And also, if you guys want to be in, if you guys are interested in winning an ink bundle, I have a thousand kg, 500 kg, and 250 kg of ink powder and film, a full supply, eight, a $700 worth of supply, like five and some change actually, 300, 400 and some change, and 300 and some change. You can win this. Just go to the website, go to the FOM apparel, purchase the FOM DTF shirt. And you have a chance of winning. So support the channel. The channel will support you. And as well, if you guys want to show channel support and support the channel, link in the bottom channel support. Go ahead and uh, take care of that and support the channel. And we're going to keep this going. So let's get into this nozzle check real fast so you guys can see what's going on. And like I said, this ain't no trick or no camera trick or nothing like that for you to see. A lot of people recommend you do power cleaners in the morning and things or whatnot. Sometimes you don't have to do that, no matter if your head is brand new, no matter if it's old or not. It just put a lot of strain on the print head when you do a lot of power cleaners. So, just letting you guys know. So, y'all getting, you know, some valuable information. So, y'all make sure y'all go ahead and see me and give me a like. I'm going to show you guys what's going on. Let's get that straight, Mike. See how the nozzles look, guys? There's no broken lines in there. I don't want to focus. There we go. There's no broken lines. So what you don't want to do is, you don't want to do a lot of power cleanings because that right there really puts too much stress on your print here. You know, so you had those good, nice, quality prints, no broken lines, no inconsistencies inside of your actual channels. And that's what you guys is looking for. So yeah, go ahead and send me a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. You don't need to do power cleanings. is basically what I'm telling you. Like, comment, subscribe to the channel. You have to do power cleanings only if you have inconsistencies in your lines. Like and comment and subscribe to the channel. You guys see what's going on with this right here. There's no camera trick. So, we out to another video.